even his bless his blessed brethren shall bless him. It means anywhere Judah appear, he attracts the blessing of his brethren. Then number two, Judah's enemy's neck has been placed into his hands. It's one thing for God to bless you. It's another thing for God to compel men to bless you. In Judah's case, any man that sees Judah, blesses Judah. Are you hearing me? Why? Because of what he represents. Then number two, for him to enjoy that kind of blessing, the neck of his enemies have to be in his hands. So God gave the neck of his enemies to him. Give me quickly that scripture, please. I have no time. Thy father's children shall bow down to you. Judah represents authority. We are men are supposed to submit to him. And men are supposed to bow down to him. Are you hearing me? That's number three. Judah represents authority. Number four, give me quickly the next verse. Judah is a lion whip from the prey. My son, thou art gone up. He stood down and couched as a lion, as an old lion, who shall rouse him up. Judah carried the lionic anointing. He can't be devout. He only devout men. There are people that cannot be killed. Judah is, the Bible call him the lion of the tribe of Judah. He carries the lionic anointing and the lionic nature. In his character, in his behavior, in his exhibition, Judah represents a lion. In the realm of the spirit, he takes his prey. Praise don't take him. No wonder David came from that tribe. He said, the lion came. The bear came. He said, I crush them. So shall I crush this giant. Why? Because that is what he represents. No animal is too big for the lion to bring down. Once he can jump over the animal, he can bring him down. A giraffe is so tall. But it does not take anything for the lion to bring giraffe down. That is the anointing you carry. No matter how powerful, no matter how big the challenge, the challenge will go down at your appearance. I'm talking about you. I'm not talking about Judah. You carry the blessing. You don't only carry the blessing. The blessing reflects on how men bless you. Then number two, your enemies cannot overwhelm you. You are the only one that can overwhelm your enemies. Whatever you pursue, you overtake. Whatever you overtake, you subdue. No one can subdue you. You are the only one that can subdue men. I prophesy to ten people. Receive the strength of Judah. Now, in the name of Jesus. You are shouting amen. You can't be sitting down. Jump and shout amen like thunder. Am I blessing you at all? Am I wasting your time? Then cooperate with me. Give me the next verse. I'm number four now. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Judah is a carrier of rulership. So he has a scepter as a representation. He has a scepter as a representation. Rulership is with Judah. And so, the staff of authority is with Judah. Check it anywhere. Nobody carry the staff of authority. Only Judah. And I hear the Lord said to five people here, you are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. That amen is no good. You are a peculiar person. No, no, no. You can shout amen, then that amen will answer you. I say you are a peculiar person. You are called to show for the presence of him who has called you from darkness to light. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Now, go further. Go further. Bindings is for unto 
the vine and is as caught unto the choice vine. He washes his garment in wine and is clothed with the blood of grapes. It means he's not only a carrier of scepter, he's also a warrior. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 9, I think verse 5 or so, he said, Every war is with a confused noise. He said, Garment, give me that scripture, please, quickly. He said, Garment, he said, Every battle of a warrior is with a confused noise, and garment rolled in blood. But he shall be with the burning of foil and fire. He's describing anywhere Judah appears, he wins war. That's why God strengthened the hands of David to win war. He's a bloody man. Did you understand me? He's a bloody man. He doesn't go for your head. But if you come for him, your head will go down. I empower you with that grace. Did you forget your amen at home? Receive it now. Anywhere you appear. Anyone seeking your life. Your life will go for your life. Anywhere you appear, anywhere you appear from today, anyone that dare your life by the Judaic blessing, I command their life to go for your life. You are shouting them and shouting them like thunder. Sit down, let me go further. I think that there's eight. Number what are we now? Number six. Give me, give me the next verse, please. In the same verse. Okay. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. The spelling of his eyes is describing the warishness of him. The warishness of him. It means he's a warrior. And so a warrior, a fierceness of a warrior is feared by the nature of his look. Are you hearing me? Now, if you carry a dull look, you can't be a warrior. In the realm of the spirit, they'll be playing you like table tennis. Time, 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 time. Are you understanding me? Am I coming back? Now, listen to me. What makes you you is what people see on your face. When you behold Judah, you will see the warishness of his face, the fierceness of him. You don't, you don't fear a general if you can look at his face and still remain the same. How you will know that somebody is very potent in war is by the nature he carries. So when you look on Judah, you will see the reddishness of his eye. The Bible says, and fire proceed from the eyes of the Lord. The warring angel carry fire in his eyes. So Judah's eyes are red. They are reddish eyes. They are not white eyes. I belong to that tribe. That's why I don't have white eyes. Nobody that has encountered the angel of this commission carry my face and look through my eye and don't see fire. Anybody that has encountered it, that is what you see. If you encounter that tall angel, that tall, huge angel, once you look through his eye, you will see fire. And fire man produce fire children. Did you hear me? From today in the realm of the spirit, carry red eye. If you are carrying white eye, they will roast you for chicken. This December, you will be their sacrifice. But if you carry red eye, they will be afraid. When they appear and look through your eye and saw the reddishness of your eye, they will tell themselves, we have entered one chance. I prophesy to you. From this night, carry a reddish eye in the spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I prophesy to 50 people, take a reddish eye now. Take a reddish eye now. Take a reddish eye now. Where are we now? The next verse. That is number seven. Seven. 
Seven. Okay, we are done. Leave it at seven. But I want to show you something. What is the introduction of Judah in life? Give me Genesis 29, 20, 25 to introduce Judah. This is the introduction of Judah. And it came to pass that in the morning, I have four minutes to round up. And in the morning, behold, Leah, and she said to La No, 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 no. Can't miss it. I think it should be coming. I'm coming. Please, sorry. I missed that. Are you with me? Are you following? Sorry, 35. 35. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, now I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah and left bearing. He was the son of praise. So the introduction of the destiny of Judah was the son of praise. But something happened. There was a twist. What was the twist? In Genesis chapter 37 verse 26. This is the sin of Judah. You can write it the sin of Judah. The sin of Judah. The sin of Judah. That all that his father said became nothing. Look at what they describe about him. But look at what iniquity has caused him. So that you will watch against certain things in your life, even as a Judah. I talked about Simeon and Levi. And I said what killed him is anger. But what is Judah's own? Judas has what we call a sellout spirit. Let's, let me show you. If you are here, you are very comfortable selling out people. Be careful. It can rob you of your blessing. Let's see it. Please give me that scripture. I call it scripture. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit it is if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? The first counsel he gave was very powerful. That you will assume that he's a loving brother. But hear what he went further to say. Give me the next verse. Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelite. And let our hand be upon him. For he is not our brother and our flesh. Sorry, for is he. He is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren, we are content. Nobody came with that idea. It was him that came with that idea. Why? Because in every venture, he wants to make profit. Be careful with people that are too conscious of profit. They can sell anybody to make profit. Who is the Judah? That is selling you. No wonder even Jesus was sold by a Judas. This one is a Judah. That one was a Judas. Said there was an S to add their, to add to their iniquity. Should I talk to you some more? Be careful. When a selling spirit enter you. When a selling spirit enter you. When a spirit of profit enter you. You can do anything to make profit. Be careful. Who are you selling to gain a relationship? Who are you selling to gain a position? Who are you selling to gain a placement? Who are you selling? You are from the same company. According to the book of Psalm 55 verse 5. You are from the same company from 5 to 8 or so. You are from the same company. You are from the same brotherhood. How come me your brother is whom you are selling? At a slight, you want to make profit out of every relationship. There are relationships you invest. It's not every relationship you profit. Why not live a sacrificial life? Instead of making profit out of men. 
people come to you, open their heart, want to relate with you, make you their friends, make you their brother, make you their dependent, make you their confidant. All you want to do at a slide, you want to sell them. Did you hear what this one said? This one is saying this. This one is saying that. This one is saying this. This one is saying that. At every slide you want, you have something to gossip about another. Say in the name of Jesus. You are not saying it. Say in the name of Jesus. Every seller spirit in my life die now. Why is it that if they ask you about your brother, why not ask them? Why are you asking me? Has he ever done this? Why are you asking me? Has he ever done that? Why are you asking me? Even if you are aware that he has done it, must you say, must it come out from your mouth? In church, you have sold each other out. That's why presence becomes difficult. Nobody that sells that enjoy presence. Whatever that was said about Judah, Judah lost it. I will show you what happened to him. When he gave back to the next generation, because he sold his brother, the first son of Judah, and the Bible said God killed him because he committed evil before the Lord. And he killed him without a child. Then his brother was forced to marry the widow of his brother. Then the brother said to himself that he will never produce a child for his brother. And so he was spilling his sperm on the earth. When it's time for her to conceive, he spills it. What happened? God killed him because of that. Sell out can make you to produce a generation of wickedness. Stop it. Sell out spirit. As simple as it is. You are in the habit of selling the other brother by your tongue. Eh. Holiness said this. Holiness said that. Holiness did this. Holiness did that. Ah, eh. Chimenem did this. Chimenem did that. Chim I, I got it today now. Chimenem did this. Chimenem did that. That is all you are anointed for. Stop it. Stop it. You have caused crack in the body. You have caused crack in the house. You have caused crack in the church. You have caused men to leave the church because of your sellout spirit. Stop it. Every slide you have, you want to talk about somebody in a bad manner. The same person fed you. The same person gave you food. The same person did kindness for you. You can't remember any act of kindness. All you can remember is what he didn't do. You don't even have the complete story of the matter. You had already sold him out. Hey, I am not too sure, but I learned he stole. But I have not found out. If you have not found out, why not keep until you find out? You don't have complete information, but you are willing to sell it. Uh, Daddy, please, I just want to tell you just to save your head. Don't save my head. Because even you that is telling me have not known whether the story is true. Sell out. Let's see what happened to sell out. Sit down, let me finish. Please, I've crossed with three minutes. Let me have additional two minutes so that I can round up. This is what happened to his generation. Genesis 38, verse 6 to 11. I'll only give you a background to 11, but I'll give you a background. It's a long reading. I'll give you a background. Give me quickly, please. He said, and Judah took a wife for heir, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. Give me the next verse, the next verse, the next verse. These people then touch you now. Be blessed. And heir, Judah's first son, was wicked. No, you're right. You're right. And heir, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord slew him. How? What will come out of sell out, if no wickedness? Be careful. 
If you are here, you are in the habit of selling brethren. Be careful. The market is full with what you have sold. Be careful. Who are you selling? Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Are you hearing me? Give me that scripture, please. And Judah said unto Omar, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up a seat for thy brother. And verse 9, And Omar knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground. Least thou he should give seed to his brother. Do you see how selfish he is, that he could not give seed to bear the name of his brother? Why? Because his brother, his father, carried it in his DNA, selling out spirit. So, wickedness becomes what comes out of their DNA. Be careful. Sometimes you feel it's about you. But what you do will produce its kind in the future. Be careful. Then God killed Oman. Then when you go further. To verse 14. Then one day. The father was drunk. If you go further. And he came into the city after sending the woman out. He came into our city as a drunk man. And when he came there, and he was wanting a harlot to sleep with. Then Tama positioned herself as a harlot. Went into the father's in-law and slept with him. But one thing she did, remember, is a carrier of authority. So he has the representation of a scepter, a signet. And a breastplate showing his authority. A woman collected it for one night stand. What glory that has been collected out of you? One night stand collected his dignity. One night stand collected his honor. All that his father said about him became useless for one night stand. Sex. Be careful. Some of you, you are Nazareth. You are not meant to spill your spam on the, on the streets. Be careful who you are intimating with. Be careful who you are mingling with. One night stand took away everything. And when you go to verse 24 of that scripture and you go further, three months later, he went back when he has awoken in the morning, she has gone. He began to look for her and order that when they find her, fire should burn her. Three months later, she appeared with pregnancy. And she told him and he said that they should seize her and kill her. Then she brought out his signet. Brought out his breastplate. Brought out his scepter. And said, whose things are these? Whomever it is, is the owner of this pregnancy. Kai! Father-in-law collapse. You see, when you sell out in the market of betrayer, a greater one will attack you in the future. What shame is that? He became shame a fool. He became pitiful. He became foolish for one night pleasure. Hey! One mistake costs you an entire destiny. But I'm here to let you know there is room for restoration. But listen to me. Don't be careless. You are selling this sister out and you are feeling excited. Somebody has bargained for your destiny tomorrow without you knowing. Look at Tama. Collected everything that Judah represents. The scepter of authority. No wonder when it was time for God to give them the kingdom, he has to give it to Benjamin. Why? Because of the sin of Judah. Don't allow your sin to affect your generation. Be careful who you are selling. They talk for church. You take it on the street to sell the church out. 
You don't come back to say, Pastor, bless me. I did not hear, but God had you. You have sold me in your heart. You have sold me out. But you are sitting physically asking, Pastor, bless me. I will stretch my hand to bless you. But heaven will not honor it and heaven will not endorse it because heaven knows the state of your heart. Heaven know why you are not blessed. That's why poverty is spread everywhere. Why? Because you are a sellout. Yes, we go through trials. We go through temptation. We go through all manner. But it does not mean that every slide you sell the church out. You sell the place of your blessing. And you return the next Sunday. And you lift up holy hands. And heaven is laughing. In Numbers chapter 12, when they spoke from verse 1, when they spoke against Moses, Moses was not there. But the Bible says, and the Lord had them. Miriam sold Moses. They say, is it only Moses that God should speak to? They are also in the same office that God should talk to. God had it. Say, you are in competition with my servant. Listen to me. I thought this morning about honor. If you know you cannot honor a man, don't come under him. Because it will be a spell on you. It will be a spell. Honor. Honor. There are people you should honor. I said this morning, I said, honor God, who is the ultimate. I said, number two, honor men that labor in word and doctrine, who is men of God. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Then I said, honor your parents. Don't allow any woman to tell you your father is a winch, your mother is a winch. Tell that woman that I will marry you. Since your own father and mother, they are not witches. Mine are witches. I will take care of my father and mother that is a witch. Because she did not kill me from the womb. She will not kill me now. Most of these things are assumptions. A lot of churches have corrupted people. And have made people to disregard and disrespect their parents. In the name of marriage. Who you marry? Now, Queen of England. She know they go toilet. What nonsense. Eh? What nonsense. What nonsense. Somebody will now come and be. Telling you to war against your brothers, to war against your sisters, to war against your friends, to war against your family, just because they married you. Marriage is not ownership. So ownership. You have your place as my wife. I have my place as a man. And as a human being, I should relate. Somebody will tell you, hey, your wife is your alpha and omega. When? And where is God? The void of marriage can be filled by relationship. The void of marriage can be filled by companionship. The void of marriage cannot be filled by friendship. Go and check it. He didn't produce a friend. He produced a help meet. Companionship and relationship is different from friendship. You walk side by side, but there is an authority over the other. That's why you are not equal with your husband. He has authority over you. That's what the Bible said. Respect him. Can't disrespect a man and respect his love. I say it again. You can't disrespect a man and respect his love. You respect a man, you treat him as a king. You get the love you're looking for. Treat him as a king. Whether he provides or he does not provide, treat him as a king. First of all, do your own side. Are you hearing me? Whether it's a man you want to marry, treat him like a king. Let him feel that he is a king. Then I tell you, he will love you. It's very easy to love. But treat the man as a king. Respect his word. Respect him. When he tells you something as a husband, respect what he tells you. Watch his word. Why? Because the, where the word of the king is, there is power. Respect the power that of his word. And I'm telling you, he will love you. Can't treat men anyhow. Even as a young girl that is in teenage age, your mother should teach you to respect men. Even if it's your junior brother.
As long as he's a man, respect him and treat him as a king. Stand to your feet as we close.